In this video, we're going to be revisiting the PSP so you can decide whether or not you want to pick one of these up in 2023. So the original PSP was released in the UK back in 2005 for £180. PlayStation Portable was released to compete against the Nintendo DS, which was released at a similar time and it was a console that I got when I was a kid. Just revisiting the nostalgia of the PSP and deciding whether or not you should maybe pick one up in 2023 because you can get these used for probably about 50 pounds. And as always, if you do enjoy this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button on the road to a thousand subscribers. We're really, really close and we're gonna try and aim for 20 likes on this video. Let's get on with the video. So we're gonna start this video off by having a look at the exterior design of this PSP. So the original PSP 1000 was released back in 2005, but there have been multiple versions of the PSP. This is the PSP 2000 or otherwise called the PSP Slim. The overall design of all the PSPs was quite similar apart from the PSP Go. So on the front of the PSP, there was a 16 by nine, 4.3 inch LCD display that had a resolution of 480 by 272 pixels. So it was quite a low resolution screen, but it was quite good for the time. On the front, there was the D-pad, typical PlayStation buttons with the triangle, square, circle, and X. And along the bottom of the console, you had a home button, volume rockers, a brightness of the screen toggle and a start button. And what was unique about the PSP over the DS was it had a joystick on its left hand side, which was very cool. And so it had a set of left and right bumpers. On the side of the console, there was a slider you could slide to turn the PSP on or slide down to put it on hold. The top of the PSP had a Wi Fi toggle, a USB mini connector with two holes so you could, uh, so it could help connect one of these cameras yeah, if you end up buying one of them. Now on the back of the PSP, there was a, you could, do it. You could slide this off and then the battery came out. So it had a removable battery, which is quite cool. This specific one here is a 1,200 milliamp hour battery. Just put it back in. One thing about the battery cover of the PSP, it seemed to always break. So yeah, I always had to put blue tack to hold it down. So on the bottom of the PSP, there was a little barrel connector for the five volt included charger. And then on the other side, there was a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. So you could plug headphones into this PSP. And next to it, you could actually get a cable that plugged this PSP into the TV. Um, so if you wanted to display your games on the TV while you were playing them, you could get a connector that plugged into here. And finally, on the other side, there was a little slot for an SD card, except for this wasn't any ordinary SD card. It was Sony's proprietary memory stick Pro Duo card. If I can get it in focus. Yeah. So this was from back when Sony tried to make their own version of the SD card. So the PSP does not accept SD cards. It accepts these weird memory stick duo cards. So if you wanted to save games on this PSP, you had to have one of these cards because this does not come with any internal storage, which is a bit annoying. And then finally on the front, there were two little holes for stereo speakers. So that's pretty much it. That's the whole design of the PSP. There was a little hole here so you could pop a lanyard um, if you wanted. One way to distinguish between this PSP 2000 and the 3000 is this metal ring around the PSP logo is slightly thinner on a PSP 3000. So speaking of weird Sony proprietary media, this, this little, oh, I just dropped it. This little funky thing here is called a UMD, a universal media disc, which is a 60 millimeter disc surrounded by a plastic case. Yeah, it could hold up to 1.8 gigabytes. And this is what all the games for PSP were stored on. So if you bought any physical media for this PSP, it would come on one of these UMD discs and you just essentially slotted it into the back of the console or oh, the right way around, like so, and then you can play the game on the console. So these UMD discs were much clunkier and larger and more fragile than the DS cartridges that DS's took. But it was also quite cool because it felt more like a, a full-size console because you're putting discs in it. So this PSP is actually a very light console. It came in at 260 grams. So it was very light and portable and actually quite small by today's standards. So size comparison with a Google Pixel 7 Pro, as you can see, the Google Pixel 7 Pro is a larger device. So that's just a quick size comparison. So since the release of the PSP in 2005, there have been a few different versions of the PSP. So originally it was called the PSP 1000, which is the original PSP. So the original PSP was a bit larger than this and a bit heavier. Um, and then a couple of years later, they released this, which is the PSP 2000. 
This PSP 2000 came with a faster processor and more RAM, although the games it ran were exactly the same. The PSP 2000 also came with a better screen and a better door for UMDs. The original PSP had a worse mechanism for putting UMD discs in, so they improved that with the PSP 2000. So a few years after they released the PSP 2000, they released the PSP 3000, which had a few little improvements. So the main improvements of the PSP 3000 over the PSP 2000 is the PSP 3000 had a slightly brighter screen and better battery life. So after the PSP 3000, they released something called the PSP Go, which was essentially a smaller version of the PSP that you could slide into. Um, so it was more compact, but you could not put UMD discs inside it. So you had to purchase all the games over the internet. Then weirdly, after releasing the PSP Go, they released the final edition of the PSP, which was called the PSP E1000, which was essentially a PSP that they stripped back. So the PSP E1000 had a smaller screen and only one speaker, so there was no stereo speakers on the PSP E1000. The PSP E1000 also lost Wi-Fi, so essentially it was just a cheaper kind of stripped down version of this. So in terms of PSP, if you want the most features, you probably should go with either a PSP 2000 or a PSP 3000. And then after the PSP E1000, they discontinued the PSP and came out with the PlayStation Vita. So back in 2007, I got one of these PSPs for Christmas and I absolutely loved it. But the question is, why did I go with a PSP over a Nintendo DS? So there were a few reasons why at the time you may have gone with a PSP over a Nintendo DS and one being the graphics. This console was more powerful than the Nintendo DS. So a lot of games on this PSP had better 3D graphics than the Nintendo DS. And even though the Nintendo DS did have more games, there were some very cool exclusives for the PlayStation. So here we have Ratchet and Clank Size Matters, which is a classic for the PSP, and Little Big Planet, which was released for the PSP, which is another very good game. And even games that were released on both the DS and the PSP looked dramatically better on the PSP. So an example of that is Lego Batman that was released both on the DS and on the PSP. In my opinion, this was a better experience on the PSP because it had a larger screen and the graphics were better. Another very cool feature about the PSP was that you could actually get a little camera to put on top of it. So you could actually take photos and videos with the PSP. And there were some games such as Invisimals where you could actually use this camera in game. This camera could take 480p video and 720p photographs, which was quite cool for something back in 2005. And it wasn't until later when the DSi came out that DS could take photos. So we're going to load up the camera, give that a go. Oh, and as you can see, you can see me behind the camera and the resolution is 1280. So that's the highest quality you could take photos with, which was actually quite cool. It's not super low for the time. It's quite a basic camera, actually. Um, not a lot of customization with the settings, but you can press select and there you go. It changes it to a video mode, which was 16 by nine. Um, and as you can see, it's 480p at 30 frames per second. You could use the arrows to zoom in and out. It applies a little bit of a digital zoom to the image. It can only zoom in to 1.4 times. So yeah, the camera was actually quite cool. Like, quality wise, it's very similar to like any cheap webcam. We're now gonna have a closer look at some games on the PSP. So we're now gonna just test out a game. So we're gonna go on to Little Big Planet. That's quite nostalgic. One thing about this console is the loading times are quite slow. It's been almost 30 seconds of loading, so yeah, it's not not the quickest loading times. So, I mean, the overall gameplay is actually quite nice. Um, the screen doesn't look the sharpest um, by today's standards, and it's not the most contrasty, um, and it is only a 60 hertz panel. I was always not a fan of the coating they put on the top of the screen, so I don't know if you can see, but it's very reflective. As you can see, there is a volume rocker, so you can use that to increase the volume. But the max volume on this console isn't actually that loud. Uh, and then this button toggles between three brightness settings. Okay indoors, it's not a super bright panel. I think it's about 200 nits. So by today's standards, it's not a very bright screen. So here we have Ratchet and Clank Size Matters, which was another game that I enjoyed as a kid on the PSP. And I would recommend playing it if you do end up picking up one of these PSPs. It is one of the better games on the console. Um, but this is one of the games that suffers from not having two joysticks. So you end up having to use these triggers to kind of pan around. I and mean, it would be good if there was another joystick here. So the question is, would I recommend picking up one of these PSPs in 2023? And yeah, I would. You could probably find these used with a bunch of games for about £50. And at the moment, it's not an expensive console to buy games for compared to some of the Nintendo Switch games, which are going for like 50 quid. So yeah, if you are looking for a portable games console, I would probably 
give this a thought. I know it is quite outdated, but you'll be able to play some of the older games. So yeah, that will conclude this video. If you did enjoy, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe on the road to a thousand subscribers. And let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on picking up one of these consoles in 2023. And I will see everyone in my next video. Mm-hmm.